Okay, so the video today is going to be installing this channel around the edge and then over all the gaps right here before I show you what's right over there. It's gonna be a pretty cool video. We're gonna have some fun. Hang tight, I'll be right back. All right, so the first thing I need to do is take this piece of aluminum, which is one inch wide by, I believe it is about a 16th of an inch thick. And I need to cut it down and fit right here. So it'll cover up this little seam in this gap right here. I already got it marked right there. Just need to go ahead and make my cut. Okay, so I am all done. Well, most of the way done at least. I still have some E-Track accessories that are gonna come in, but I got all of the aluminum channel all the way around. I even have this little aluminum plate right here. I have it going all the way down the side and I have another aluminum plate there at the end. Didn't take too long. Basically what I did, didn't do the perfect job here, but I cut little notches out wherever I needed to make bends there so I didn't have to make so many cuts. It's basically one piece from there going all the way around to here and then I have this short little piece right here. You guys may be noticing this thing right here. So this is a Hollywood bike rack or bike stand. I'm not sure what you want to call it, but this is what you might normally see outside of a business. The good folks over at eTrailer, my official channel sponsor, provided this for my trailer because I was looking for a more secure way of transporting five or six bikes whenever we go out biking. And this holds five bikes easily, and you can even put tires in these narrower spots, but for the bigger mountain bikes I have, or for the electric bikes I have, they would fit between these spots. And I just got this pipe insulation from Lowe's, so 
it really is going to do a good job of securing them here and then the e-track is going to keep the bike stable so i'm going to strap this down to the actual deck whenever we use it and once this is secured in place i can load up as many bikes as i want back here i can load up my daughter's little power wheels thing and we can kind of get the whole thing secured in a trailer so whenever we get to where we're going we just drop the ramp roll them down and we're good to go so this is the setup and it looks really good at this point. So again, I got a lot of e-track accessories. I got these right here. This consists of a bunch of shorter straps with rings. I have uh, several ratchet straps. I have some really cool tool organizers, all this stuff that's still coming in. I only have about half of it here. And once I get all of that in, I'll show you how it all can be configured here. And I'm also gonna be adding more e-track. So I have another piece of e-track that's gonna be going up here. And then I have another piece of e-track that's going to be going across the bottom right here. And it's going to give me the ability to secure whatever I have in the back of the trailer in just about any fashion I want. And I'm still thinking of building a little workbench across the front of the trailer right here so I can kind of set things on it and, you know, be able to work or work out of here if I need to. But that's pretty much it. I'll put a link to this in the description. This is, again, is something you might typically see out in front of a business. But it's the perfect width for the trailer. So... The overall width inside of here is 68 and a half inches, and the overall width of this specific piece right here, I believe is 62 inches. So yeah, we're right at 62 inches for the bike rack itself, and the overall width of the trailer is 68 inches. So it left me several inches on each side, and the cool thing about how this sits is that these little cross beams are above the e-track. So that's how I'm gonna secure it to the e-track. I'll basically put a strap across it and just ratchet it down to the e-track and it shouldn't go anywhere. So very, very cool. Now, this was a bit more difficult to assemble than I thought. It all seems very, very simple. You simply put this bar here, you put this piece right in the center and then you put the other bar in the back. If you move this to the center, you can put bikes on both sides of it, which is really cool. So it's kind of a dual-sided option if you wanna hold up to like 10 bikes or it's a single-sided option if you wanna hold up to five bikes. In my case, I just need five because you really can't fit bikes front and back, at least the longer style bikes in this if I did it that way. Plus, you'd have to kind of offload it from the center and that's not really what I was trying to do. Um, I have a spare tire holder that's gonna attach to the wall as well, similar to the one that I put on my other cargo trailer. But yeah, this should be really cool. And it should be a really interesting way to transport the bikes especially considering the fact that it gives me the ability to kind of secure it this way and then just strap the tires down to the back and they shouldn't move at all. But you know, the first trip we take out with it, I'm definitely gonna to wanna to demonstrate that. Plenty of e-track to secure it though. I don't think I'm gonna have any issue whatsoever. But yeah, all the aluminum channel is down. I might put a bead of silicone around the top and bottom like I did for that edge right there and for this one right over here. What do you guys think? I mean, this trailer was a very, vanilla trailer when I got it. That's the bottom side of the flap. I might do something with that still. I'm not sure what I'm going to do, but I put little rubber, little bumpers there at the edge of it. But what do you guys think? I mean, it is certainly a big improvement from what it used to be. I love the color we chose, that slate gray. I think the rubber matting turned out perfect. The E-Track looks good. The aluminum railings around the outside. And all in all, I think we're in maybe 650 bucks total for everything. So it's certainly not an expensive upgrade to do all the things that were done. I think this rubber mat was the single most expensive portion of it and that probably was, I think $175. But everything else is relatively inexpensive. And this is all stuff that you can do pretty much at your house. Nothing here really requires any type of professional knowledge. And uh, it took four complete days, but only working about two hours each day on this project. This is kind of one of those, hey, honey, I'm going out this evening to uh, work on the trailer a little bit and, you know, finishing up right when the sun starts to go down, it starts cooling off a little bit. Anyways, guys, I'll put a link in the description of this video to all the different things we put in place on this trailer. I'd love to know what your thoughts are, if this is something that you might do to your trailer, or you know what, if you've done something like this to your trailer, feel free to share a picture. Send it to my, uh, my Gmail account, and I might just post it in the community section of my channel. Anyways, guys, I sure hope you enjoyed this video series. If you haven't had a chance, please take a moment, subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up, and we'll be back to talk to you again real soon.